Whether you are a woman just now embarking on a strength training program, or you're someone who has strength trained for decades, we all love either the reinforcement or the confirmation we're on the right path, what you're doing works, and how and why. Women in midlife, more than any other women prior to it, care about why this works, not just how or what should I do, but why, so that we are motivated to keep going down that path because I think we all feel a sense of urgency just about our lives in general. Yes, we're always in a hurry, but there's also that I don't have time to waste here doing exercise that isn't beneficial, but most of all, we need to find that sweet spot, the MVP. That is the minimum viable physical exercise. And I'm talking formally exercise where you're really working hard and sweating, not just movement. You need the minimum viable physical exercise that you can do to get the results that you want so that you can do life, right? We're not supposed to be sitting on the couch recovering from our exercise or so sore. We can't go up and down stairs we're actually supposed to be benefiting from all the other things we love and want to do. Amen. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns. Most of all, hope to inspire you about the way that you can age and surround you by being one of those people who shows you how it is done. It's being done and it can be done by you. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. This episode is sponsored by our Stronger Tone and Define program. It's a 12-week strength training program made for menopause based on research on women in menopause, not on mice, not on men, and not even on younger women, because you have a very different set of hormones than you did then and then mice and men. I'm going to put the link in the show notes, but today I'm going to be talking a lot about it. No apologies. So I'm sharing testimonials because of this, because it's often so easy to quit. When success is here, it's just maybe not in exactly what you're doing, or it's in the around the corner phenomena, and you need to simply keep going. I think this will help. And for those of you who are like me, prove it to me, girls, before you jump in and invest time, money, or energy in anything, you want to know a little bit more about where's the proof in the science in this. And I'm going to share it. So if you come to the show notes today, you'll see all the links, but I'm actually going to talk about each different individual woman and then talk about the science behind why it worked for her, what we know about it. All right, let's dive in. And I'm going to start, I believe that no matter who you are, whether you need a shift in your program, you want reinforcement that you're on the right path, or you want to get started, but you're still on the fence wondering if now is the time, there is something here for you. Introducing you to Diane. Diane changed her bone density by strength training at home during the pandemic from January to September of 2020. Now, we weren't in lockdown yet in January, but she and I had just met. She had just begun to do strength training. And then, of course, in March, there were no longer gyms available to her. So she was at home. She emailed me back and said, "Uh, I can't believe it. Here's what happened. I was first diagnosed last year at this time. So generally, bone scans or a DEXA scan are given annually, and it takes that long. You're not going to see overnight improvements in your bone density. Those of you who are looking at your smart scales and hoping that they're going to tell you that, if you're seeing changes in your bone density or what you think is probably not so true, it takes months, it takes the right repetition. Let me give you some quotes directly from the research about what and how Diane was experiencing. Quote unquote, for this type of exercise to be effective, a joint reaction force superior to common 
daily activity with a sensitive muscle strengthening has to be determined. So that was the research quote directly, not very clear. If I was writing that or rewriting that, I probably would have changed it. But I want to talk to you about what they're quoting and they're talking about whole plate vibration. And you may have heard about it. And here's who it's most appropriate for. It does have a great effect for those who are deteriorating. They're elderly. They are not able to do more. And yet, if you're thinking that's a substitute for strength training to muscular fatigue, you're very wrong. You could combine strength training with whole plate vibration. It's only effective when it's combined in that way quote unquote again. However, the combination of exercise should be tailored on the patients. And I use this from the research. I work with clients, just to be clear, not patients, on their clinical features. So there's no agreement. Unfortunately, in the research, no agreement exists on the best protocol in terms of duration, frequency, and the type of exercises to be combined. There needs to be still so much more research about how does full body vibration plus strength training support the best bone density? The exercise types most effective on bone mineral density for the neck of the femur, that's your hip, which should be considered in clinical practice, appear to be the progressive resistance strength training for lower limbs. We are talking about squats, lunges, leg press, The most effective intervention for bone mineral density and the spine has been suggested to be the multi-component strength training exercise program. We're talking about pushing and pulling exercises. We're talking about chest press. We're talking about rowing, any type of pulling exercise, rowing, lap, pull down, those kinds of movements, much more helpful than anything else. That's from the science. Let's talk about weight loss. Jennifer lost 100 pounds. She hit that threshold. Now, I can't say to you, and I don't want to confuse you and have you think during the pandemic, and in fact, that first year that she lost 100 pounds. She had started on that journey, but she crossed that threshold of losing 100 pounds during the pandemic by combining lifting weights at home with her regular walking and cardiovascular training, including it. But Jennifer, this is important, is in her mid sixties. She's older than 65. And sometimes we think, oh, or we're told the metabolism slows as you age, depending on what you do. If you don't strength train, if you don't eat the right things, if you don't sleep, this might be true. But those are all choices that you don't have to make. Jennifer followed a training program consisting of two high intensity, heavy, meaning strength training sessions a week, one functional movement session, and two interval training sessions, along with daily movement in the form of walking, golf, hiking, biking, or swimming. For postmenopausal women, HIT or high intensity interval training compared to endurance exercise training is much more effective at removing adipose tissue and visceral belly fat. Weight training, even with minimal exercises, is proven to predict weight control in postmenopausal women. Weight loss comes from increasing lean muscle, which creates metabolic changes adequate enough to promote energy, but under the threshold where rest or couch compensation occurs. Jennifer likes to work hard, so I've actually had to hold her back from doing too much. Insulin sensitivity is another factor here. It's another reason postmenopausal women want to exercise specifically to strength train. In a pre-diabetic state, midlife women often need the boost of muscle to support blood sugar control. Even type 1 diabetics find more opportune exercise in strength training compared to aerobic exercise. 
And the reason is often aerobic exercise is more risky for them in terms of um, hypo, meaning too low of blood sugar. The risk of going too low is greater with aerobic exercise, the dance between the need for insulin and not. Now, when we talk prediabetes in your midlife, we're talking type two, right? We're talking something that life changes, lifestyle changes can help you reduce or eliminate. Jeannie says she was doing too much too often or caught wondering if she had time to do it today and she was not stretching or knowing the importance of exercise. Following the program, it became clear to her that number one, she did have time. She didn't need to do too much and she actually felt better for having done less. So in spite of this, it's important to note that me, you know, as a fitness professional for almost 40 years, I'm asked frequently about women in perimenopause, whether they should do flipping 50 or women in postmenopause in their 60s or 70s should do the same as flipping 50. Because if the name implies to you, well, I have to be 50 or I need to be in menopause, you are in menopause. If you're approaching it, you're on the runway. And or if you've already taken off and that bus sailed, you will deal with the same hormonal changes you went through for the rest of your life. And those of you in perimenopause or even pre before it all happens, the best time to start paying attention to these things is before it occurs. So you'll have a better, smoother ride during, and you'll have much better health after. So the biggest exciting feature that we can share together among Flipping 50 members is sharing this with our daughters and our nieces so that they are already on the right path. One study recently hypothesized now keep listening, that postmenopausal women would have more muscle damage from exercise due to lower hormone levels or what they deemed hormone deprivation. It was disproven. That hypothesis was false. Heavy weight training uh, revealed positive outcomes without negative repercussions they were experienced by both peri- and postmenopausal women. So are Flipping 50 programs appropriate for you if you're in perimenopause, even symptom-free or asymptomatic? Or those of you who are 10 or 20 years beyond menopause, yes. Now, let's consider a study done in 2021, but on women not on hormone replacement therapy. The difference that I would hypothesize, and I have seen it myself in our community, that those women who are on hormone replacement therapy, they will simply have those same results, positive ones, but they will be amplified. They'll have an easier time gaining lean muscle and losing fat or avoiding muscle loss and fat gains, depending on their current status. Let me introduce you to Kathy. She mentioned gratitude for the safe form and demonstrations of it that helped her do the stronger program. And beyond it was the community that gave her a, such a boost in realizing that she could exercise even when she was hosting house guests since another person on the Facebook group had followed my suggestion that the way we deal with the holidays can be different than we've ever thought before. And I want to share some evidence here that, you know, women who are, we are more prone to injury compared to men and to older women more at risk than younger women. But there is not a lot of data on this. The injuries tend to occur from overuse syndrome more than they don't and in the application of too much endurance exercise. And this makes sense as there's repetitive injury strain that causes breakdown over time 
And because we've got a lack of these hormones, estrogen specifically, that we know is a stimulant for muscle, it's a stimulant for bone, it very likely also plays a big role in being a protective stimulant for our ligaments, that connective tissue around the joints. So it means we need to dial in that again, that MVP, which is not most valuable player. It is minimum viable physical exercise. So we get the results we want without the injuries we do not want. A singular sport activity like running or even too much walking creates muscle imbalances by over and over and over simply using the same ones. In the case of running or walking, it's always linear, always forward, right? You're using the same muscles, but you are neglecting others. And I know it's a very easy exercise. It's very accessible for many people, but you do want to have things that move you in all three planes, meaning having more rotation involved, having lateral exercise involved and working from the backside the kinetic chain. So moving all forward, we're not necessarily neglecting the back, but we're not using it as much. So unless you do a lot of hill training, which will use the back of the body, that's important consideration. This 40 year fitness professional talking to you right now is a primary learner of this. It wasn't when I was doing marathons and teaching classes frequently that I was most fit. But when I became a triathlete with much more balanced use of my body, swimming, a little bit more upper body work, a little bit more rotation, cycling, lower body work, but not beating myself up and a lot of core exercise while you're riding. And then combine that with running much more balanced use of my body. So those of us who have a somewhat addictive personality, we're all vulnerable to that, by the way, feeling good feels good. And we tend to want more. We're so greedy, right? That even that can go too far. If you love running because of the the sensations you get from it, you may be inclined to want to do more and more and more of it. But the key is finding that sweet spot. Chocolate cake tastes really good too, but we don't want to overdo it, right? Emily says she has always thought weights would end up being monotonous, but that the program kept it interesting and different each time. She also appreciated that knowing only having to do it twice a week is a good thing. It kept her motivated. Let me read to you from the research because there are no accidents at flipping 50. Women's perceptions of strength training is changing, but slowly. Interestingly enough, the older we are, the more committed we get. Barriers including, "Mm, I'm too busy, I have a lack of desire, no mojo, too much discipline is required to continuously take a part in regular resistance training. These things are true even of young college age women, but the biggest barriers weren't say gaining bulk or size. Still some of those feelings about, I would get bulky if I lifted weights linger for women over 50 who grew up with those myths and with a high carb diet that most likely contributed to any bulk experience. The point here is that our perceptions about exercise can be so very different from what we've always thought, what we read once and stuck with us forever, that surrounding yourself by an environment who repeatedly is proving this isn't true is required in order to get us to change. Change is one of the hardest things humans do even when we want to. Hannah said, this is the middle of her stronger program when she was posting. That means she's about six weeks in. She is definitely stronger, happier. She's getting better sleep. She has more muscle and I don't even care about the scale. 
Hard to believe, she said, but true. And how true would that be for any of us? The struggle to weigh and put your measure of success on the scale is real. Giving that up, letting it go is empowering and knowing what you gain or lose can be important. So I'm not wanting to disconnect you completely from weighing, but specifically getting you to tune into not just weighing in pounds or kilograms, depending on where you are in the world, but to weigh, are you gaining or losing muscle? Are you gaining or losing fat? Knowing your body composition with a smart scale, so very important. And I'm going to put the link to my recommendations. There is one for every budget so that you can monitor, monitor, but infrequently. Susan finished stronger. Tona defined, definitely seeing more muscle definition. She lost two inches from her belly, one inch from her hips, Her clothes fit better, and after shoulder and back injuries last year, she managed to recover and used this program to get back into weights. My only comments here, so fantastic, right? So realizing that injuries, I mean, a back injury, pretty significant, right? Allison was pleased with the program and with her progress. She had definition in her triceps, which she never had before. Joanna noted she actually did the exercises for 12 weeks, which never happened in a gym. She said it was much better for her than at a gym with the leeway for time. No commute, plus time to do it when she needed and wanted to. Convenience of exercise, by the way, is huge. The resistance to strength training, and I know that's pun intended, right? It's often multifactorial. It's it's number one, people will say inconvenient. There's a time issue that we all feel about everything, let's face it. And often we also don't acknowledge this, but we're uncomfortable in a gym. There is a different kind of coat of armor maybe that you put on when you walk into a gym versus you're doing something yourself. And I will tell you that as a fitness professional and actually someone who's exercised consistently for 40 years, I still, when I walk into a gym, there is a little discomfort. And and I, I'm going to not put my finger on this very well, but I'm going to attempt to. You know, I think there is a a certain amount of feeling like you have to be on feeling that i mean you're i like to dress in shorts i like my skin exposed to the air so that i can cool off better you know and i i do not do that to be quote unquote looked at and i don't like it <laughs> when somebody looks i'm not there to do those exercises for anyone else's benefit. I'm not showing off. I'm, I'm certainly not made up, but, um, you know, there is, I'm not there to be on display and I don't like to be treated that way. In fact, when there are, are mirrors, I often turn myself away from the mirror so that I'm focused on how does this feel for me? When I'm doing this exercise, I will focus on looking out the window at a swimming pool or something other than the mirror. I know what my form feels like. I know good form by now after 40 years, but that even happens to me, right? And I know I've got good form. I know I teach good form to the trainers, not just to you, but I think everyone experiences a little bit of, you know, there is public display going on. So if you feel uncomfortable because you are unfamiliar with the exercise, I can totally relate and empathize. The reasons that are given by women of all ages is they don't want to be seen exercising. I can remember walking with my mom when I was 18 And she didn't want to go for a walk until it was almost dark. (laughs) This reason exactly. We don't want to commute 
uh, I'm not in the mood to exercise, tired and too much fatigue, sore, achy, or don't want to be. So a fear of that. These are really um, all the reasons given by all ages of women from college to older adults. And this is really a big part of the reason behind the frequency of programming and encouragement toward movement outside of exercise being most important. We don't want the injuries that come with doing too much too soon. So that reduced frequency that I recommend with the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women allows freedom, allows complete recovery and reduction of injury risk or soreness. One of our former students, Tamara, said this, the stronger program impacted my life. The lessons you learn on lifting weight allow you to feel comfortable walking into any gym. The program, this program was one of the best things I could have done for myself. And I will tell you that even when our participants begin a program to mitigate menopause symptoms, say bone or muscle loss, belly fat, weight gains, they stay if they can stay beyond a certain sticking point because it becomes enjoyable and empowering according to a recent study in BMC Women's Health. That is a journal. And I didn't need research to tell me this. I see it daily. Comments like this, you know, I started for weight loss, but I got my life back. They are a frequent occurrence at Flipping 50, and I am honored to be on the receiving end of those. Terry said she'd started gaining weight, and when she tried what always worked, it didn't. She gained more weight, uh, actually about 16 pounds. She felt weaker, tired, anxious, and she was having hot flashes. She found me or Flipping 50 on YouTube, was trying to piece together an exercise program. She learned about cortisol, core exercise, why sit-ups aren't good for the back. And so when she got the information about Stronger, she was ready to find out what else she didn't know. She realized that she can eat a wide variety of food and still lose inches. Amazing, she says. She's getting more energy. She also did the companion food flip that we offer with the strength training program. And she said, I think everyone should do it. Within two days of starting, her hot flashes stopped. So if you are on the fence, I hope these comments and I hope that correlating research behind why these comments even are happening, that there's no accidents in the way we plan the program, provide the program and provide the community for you. I hope that they've helped you make a decision. And although I would love to have you in the program, if you're on the fence, the biggest piece that I want for you is that you're able to say yes or no. And no, if that's a solid no, this doesn't feel like a fit or if it's a no, not right now. Making a decision is one of the hardest things we do as humans. So having that off your plate frees up energy for you to use elsewhere. If not this program, something. If you're unsure, if you need to talk to a real human, DM me. So direct message me on Instagram if you're there. I don't check Facebook Messenger. If you're sending messages there, they sit for a very long time. It's just not something we regularly do. So you can reach us at deborahflipping50.com, but you can reach me directly and not our team if you direct message me on Instagram. If you have a question, I will personally respond. And that's Instagram and it's flipping50tv. Make sure you have the TV on there. There's another account, but it's not checked regularly. That's just five zero. So flipping 50 TV and all of the resources for today's episode are in today's show notes. If you could relate to any of the women who shared their experience during the program or after it and the reward that they got, 
or you aspire to make some of those successes true for you too. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes and that'll be at flipping50.com forward slash strength training enough. And what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today. And no matter what you do, if you are thinking about the Stronger Program, I'm going to link you to the page, but the doors close for that program at the end of the month. So if you get there too late, you can get on a notifications list, but make a decision and share this with a friend.